Greetings. In this problem, we want to do shear and moment diagrams of a simplified model of a canoe with three people sitting in it, floating in a tank of water. And um, this problem was inspired by the ASCE concrete canoe competition. And um, in that competition, students design, build, and race their canoes, and um, usually use an approximate method to analyze their canoe that is pretty similar to what we're seeing here. I want to talk a little bit about what the actual behavior would be, and then we'll do shear and moment diagrams for our approximate simple model. Okay, so basically we have three loads on our canoe. We have two people, one that's sitting over here, one that's sitting over here, a nice symmetric loading. And then we have another person sitting in the middle. And in addition to that person's weight, I'm just going to lump the mass of the boat into that force vector and include it in that point load. Okay, so um, that is one of several approximations here. I could also have modeled the mass or the weight of the canoe itself as a distributed load that may or may not have been linear. But again, we're just taking a, a simple approach here. In terms of the interaction between the water and the canoe, right, we're looking at the volume of water displaced um, to understand kind of how far into the water this canoe would submerge. Then we're looking at static fluid pressure. And so it's going to be zero here if I wanted to model this a little more accurately. It's going to increase linearly with depth, but it is on a curved surface. And so I would, if I wanted to make a more accurate model of that fluid pressure, I would set up a pressure diagram that was normal to the curvature and the surface of that canoe all the way around. Okay. And you would get a slightly different mathematical model for actually analyzing the canoe. As mentioned, this has been simplified because really I just want to drill you on shear moment diagrams. And I thought this was a cool one to think about. So we will pursue with these assumptions. Um, lump that mass of the boat here and then just do a simple uniform distributed line load for the interaction of the water on the boat. Let's figure out what that is and we'll do that by some summing the forces in the y direction using one of our equations of equilibrium. Downward I have 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 that's 1 and in another 1.5 that's 2.5 kilonewtons going down and pushing up on the on the body which is our boat we have w times the length that length is given as four meters right there four meters okay. so four meters times w divide both sides and we can use um, 0 0.625 decimal to represent our line load on the bottom of the boat. Okay, make sure you get the units right here. So it's kilometers per unit force per distance. All right, now we're ready to kind of plug and chug through these equations. For the first meter, I'll use a blue color. For the first meter, we want to increase up to here. And we want to do so linearly because the load is constant. Why am I increasing and not decreasing? I'm just following the directions of these arrows. The area under the load curve for this first segment is equal to one meter of width multiplied by a load intensity or height of 0.625 kilonewtons per meter. And so that gives me 0 0.625. And the units in this plot, of course, are going to be kilonewtons units of force. 
Okay, at this point, we need to decrease by this concentrated load. So zoom on down till we get to this point. Use a finer pen. I think I'm going to use a finer pen so then I can show this in proper detail. So this point up at the top was 0 0.625. And right here, once I subtract out the 0.5, that lands me at 0 0.125. Okay, after we get done with our concentrated load, we are ready to increase again for another meter. So 0.625 times one meter. We're going to increase right up here. Okay, we're going to do it linearly. And I do encourage you to draw these to scale and you know maybe that means you're eyeballing it like I am maybe it means you've got graph paper but even if you're eyeballing it you know make a concerted effort to draw this to scale the slopes of these two lines are exactly the same because they correspond to that value okay and that tip top point once I add in 0.625 to 0.125 that lands me at Wrong pen, 0 0.75 right there. Now we are ready to jump. I'm at positive 0 0.75. I want to jump down. That lands me at negative 0 0.75. And if you just watch the previous tutorial in this series, you learn something about symmetry and anti-symmetry. Since this is symmetric, when I integrate it, the next higher order function will be anti-symmetric. Okay, so if I'm feeling confident in my free in my free body diagram, I can do the rest of this plot just using anti-symmetry. In other words, I want to take this geometry fold it over that line, and then fold it over this line. It'll look something like this. Okay, that one will go there. Okay, so I'm kind of working backwards using the anti-symmetry. That one is 0 0.125. And I jump away from the axis to Zero point six two five, and then finish it up back to zero like that. Okay, so that's how we could use anti symmetry to finish out the other half of this diagram. Of course, you could continue to do it by. Um, you know, using our, our typical method, uh, but not necessary if you start to recognize the symmetry and anti-symmetry shortcuts. As we go into the moment diagram, I want to take advantage of that. Okay, I'm going to have this area, this pink area and this pink area are the same. One's positive, one's negative, but in terms of the value, it's a triangle, so one half base times height. I don't have that computation at hand, so I'm just going to call that area one. The formula for area of a trapezoid is base times average height. So you can figure out what that is. I also do not have that one readily at hand. We're going to call that one area two. Okay, one of them's positive, one of them's negative, but in terms of the magnitude, we'll just call it area two. All right, because I can, I'm going to use my symmetry tool. I'm going to use my symmetry tool. So I'm going to line that up, lock it in, and then I'm going to hide it so I don't even see it as I'm drawing. Okay, I'm going to recognize that when I integrate an anti-symmetric function, I get a symmetric function. 
Okay, let's do this qualitatively. Turn on my symmetry. Pick out a pretty color. Okay, start at a moment of zero. Increase quadratically, concave up. And before, before I do the plot, I'm just going to draw that line. I'm going to draw that line there. Okay, back to business. Concave up. I'll label the value in a minute once I turn my symmetry off so it won't be mirror image on both sides. Okay, but qualitatively, then I increase again by this green amount area too. And I want to do concave up because my shear value is increasing from left to right. So we're going to do something like this. Close enough and give that a big point there. Turn my symmetry off. Um, I do, you know, do these little calculations yourself and spot check. Of course, we do need some units, so I'll put kilonewtons times meters in the legend. Uh, this coordinate here is going to be 0 0.3125. That is equal to area one. And this change in moment right there, that is equal to area two. And this one's equal to area one. Um, so once you add area to there, that lands us up at 0 0.75. 3, 1, 2, 5 there. Okay. There you have it. That is a simplified model for sheared moment in a canoe under a couple assumptions, namely that we can lump the mass in the middle and that we can model the fluid pressure as a simplified line load. Thanks for watching.